Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. And this is what it says. And the he that's being spoken of here is Jesus. And as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he should be born blind? Jesus answered, It was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was in order that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me. As long as it is day, night is coming when no man can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and applied the clay to his eyes. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. And so he went away and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and those who previously saw him as a beggar were saying, is this not the one who used to sit and beg? Others were saying, this is he. Still others were saying, no, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the one. Therefore, they were saying to him, how then were your eyes opened? And he answered, the man who is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went away and washed and I received sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. Pray with me. Lord, this day, may it not just be a reading about sight, but may we gain our sight, our insight, holy vision, that we know your presence here in this place. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Read a story, it took place in 2019, that... Uh, it, was, it took place in France. There was this woman that had a painting in her kitchen. Painting that she thought was very pretty. It was, it was oil on canvas, and she kept it above her hot plate. One day, an art evaluator was in her home in 2019, saw the painting, said, that's beautiful. She said, yes, I like it a lot. It was a, a picture that was uh, simply titled, Christ Mocked. It was Christ before the crucifixion and, and him being mocked. And the, the art evaluator said, you know, if I were you, I would get that painting appraised. Well, the woman took the art evaluator's word and took to have it appraised. It was sold at auction. It turned out that the painting was not just an old painting for that woman, that the painting was painted in 1280 A.D., and it sold in 2019 for $26.8 million. <laughs> I love those stories. Those stories that the thing that nobody noticed was the treasure. That it's not a hidden treasure buried away where nobody could ever find it and somebody just slips up on it. No, I like the stories. I like the stories where it's the treasure in plain sight. It's the treasure that, that someone saw that nobody else saw. 
I love those kind of stories. This morning, this is one of those stories. Jesus and his disciples are, are walking along and, and the disciples see a blind man and nothing but a blind man except maybe a blind man that might be used as a, a well, as an object lesson. Who sinned, this man or his parents? Well, Jesus isn't having any part of that. (laughs) He says, neither. And he sees in the man what the disciples do not. He sees the treasure in the man that the others do not. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about. That treasure... Treasure, the treasure that's not hidden, the treasure that's in plain sight, the treasure that Jesus sees, that he sees in others, this treasure that we might see as well. The disciples saw the man as an object lesson, something that they might learn from, not not someone that was valued by God, certainly not valued enough by Jesus to heal, or they would have said, Jesus, here's a blind man, You could heal him. They saw him not as treasure. They saw him as broken. And oftentimes, people don't see broken things as treasure. But that's not what Jesus saw. Jesus saw one who, that it was in order that the works of God might be displayed in him, is what Jesus says. Well, that... The works of God might be displayed. That, that, that goes back to the creation story, that you and I were created in the image of God. In other words, that the, the, the works of God might be displayed in us. The light of God might be displayed in us. That it's His work that can be displayed even in those who are broken have a good friend named Ted. Ted called me up a long time ago. I was single, living in, well, in the middle of nowhere. Ted called, said, what you doing this weekend? That was kind of a running joke with Ted. Being a pastor of a church who preaches every Sunday, he knew exactly what I was doing that weekend. And I said, oh, nothing much, just preaching and working on a sermon. He said, well, how about I come visit on Sunday? I'll stick around till Monday. I said, that'd be great. I said, I have some work to do on Monday. I I know I need to to go to the church on Monday morning and visit the hospitals. He said, that'd be great. So he came over Sunday morning, and he was there, part of worship service. And then the next day, we goofed off and that afternoon we goofed off. The next day, he said, I'll go for a walk while you go to the church and do your hospital visits. Well, we met for lunch, and then at lunch, he said, well, do you know Mr. Williams across the street? I said, yeah, not real well. I said, "Uh, I've talked to him a time or two. He said, he was sitting at the end of his driveway in a lawn chair. He had heart surgery a couple of months ago, and um, he, he said after the storm last night that he wasn't able to pick up the limbs in his yard. He tried, but it just wore him out, and he knew that the neighbors were looking at his ugly yard with all those limbs. And uh, we chatted for a while, and I picked up limbs for him. He's a really great guy. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you were able to do that for him. He said, well, do you know Miss Johnson the street over? I said, I don't think I do. He said, yeah, when I was walking, she was walking her dog. I said, oh, I've seen the woman who walks her dog. She walks her dog quite a bit. Ted said, yeah, I was talking to her, and about a month ago, she was pregnant, and she had a miscarriage. She said the walls of her house just seemed to close in on her, so now, just to get out, she walks her dog pretty much all day long. And then he began to to tell me about Miss Johnson. And then... I realized that Ted, Ted was given holy eyes, eyes to see the treasure in others. 
and to create a space, a space where a holy place where they might display the works of God, their best selves. Henry Nouwen talks about this in his book, Reaching Out, that all of us, we, we travel this journey between hostility to hospitality. That sometimes we see others around us as an annoyance or maybe as just, you know, a an object lesson as disciples do. But the power, the power of the risen Christ has power enough to, that we might see, see the treasure in others and, and move our eyes from, from seeing others in hostility to, to hospitality, to creating space where others might display the works of God, that they might be their best selves, well, it was the prophet Isaiah who said that when the Messiah came that he would give sight to the blind. And here, here Jesus says, I came into the world that those who do not see may see. That those who don't see, not just with sight, but with insight, might see the treasure of God in others. God on display in others, the treasure, the treasure in others. The risen Christ has power we don't to see, the treasure of God in others, treasure not hidden but in plain sight. But not only that treasure in others, that treasure in ourselves, that Jesus turns to the blind man and he says that this was given in order that the works of God might be displayed in him. That that's who you and I are. We're the treasurer of God. The only ones made in his image to reflect, to display the image of God. That's who we are. It's who we were made to be. It's a true story about a little boy who was, was having a difficult time walking, walking at all. And it seemed like the, the, as the days went on, he was having a harder and harder time walk, walking. So his mother took him to the doctor. The doctor said he had infantile paralysis, that he had gotten a fever and that he would not be able to walk nor run. Well, his mother invested herself in that boy and she began to massage his legs every day, put warm compresses on his, his legs. Well, it turned out that he, he got to where he could walk. One day he saw some boys at a high school track meet and he saw them at one of the events, a high jump event. And the little boy said, that's what I want to do. I want to become a world champion high jumper. Well, for a little boy who had a difficult time walking at all, much less running, that was a pipe dream. That was something that, that well, if he had listened to what others said about him, it would have never come to pass. But he didn't listen to what others said about him. And not only did he begin to, to walk, he began to run. And in high school, he competed in the high jump. In college, he competed in the high jump. After college, he continued to compete. Even after he was married, he continued to compete in track meets and in the high jump. At an indoor event in 1953, this little boy, now a grown man, named Walter Davis, he was competing, and they moved the bar from 11 and a half, 5 eighths inch to 6 feet, 11 and 1 half inches. That was a new world record. Well, at his first attempt, he tried to get over 
six, 11 and a half inches, six feet, 11 and a half inches, and he tipped the bar. The second time he tried, he, he tipped the bar as well. The third time and the final time, he made it, and he broke the world record, 1953. He was able to, to break the world record because he didn't let others say who he was or who he was not, that he was more than a diagnosis. Well, you and I are more than, well, we're more than what we say about ourselves. We're more than what the world says about us. That John chapter 1, verse 9, the Bible says to all who receive Jesus and believe in his name, he gives a power, power to become children of God. And that's what the risen Christ does in you and me. He gives power, power to take all those things that, well, it may be that others have been saying about us, or it may be what we see in ourselves. And that what he does is he takes that and, and on the cross, he nailed it to the cross and he took away its power once and for all. And when he rose from the grave, he rose to breathe the power of his Holy Spirit in, in you and me, that the power of God might be displayed, that the treasure of God might be seen first by God and it might be seen in us as well. God's treasure in you. God's treasure in me. A treasure far beyond our abilities or even our lack of abilities. Sometimes we tend to see ourselves as, as what we do best. But that's not the way God sees us. Sometimes we see ourselves as what we lack and what we do worse and that we're less than and that's not the way that God sees us. Sometimes people see themselves as a victim but that's not the way that God sees us. We're God's treasure, God's children and the, the power of God, the risen Christ lives in you and in me. His treasure in you. It's not hidden. It's in plain sight for all who have eyes to see. And Jesus said, I came into this world that those who do not see may see. May see his treasure in others. Then they may see his treasure in ourselves. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning, that we might see that Jesus is the treasure. Jesus is the treasure. Jesus tells a story about a merchant who goes looking for pearls. And when he finds the pearl, the pearl like he's never seen before, he sells all that he has and buys that one pearl. That he buys the treasure. Well, then after he buys the tre treasure, you have to ask the question, well, does he own the pearl or does the pearl own him? Well, that is the question, isn't it? That is the question, isn't it? that Jesus is Lord. And as long as we think we have Jesus, he stays under our control. But when Jesus becomes all that we have, then we become his. Story I read about Dr. Graham Scroge. He is a great Scottish Bible teacher. And as a great Bible teacher, he was counseling one day with a woman, a woman who was struggling with the decision that she had to make. Well, she knew the right decision to make. She knew what it was that God was, was calling her to, but it was a difficult decision. And with Dr. Scroge, she was agonizing about it. So what he did was he took a piece of paper, and on that piece of paper, he wrote two words. He wrote, no, comma, Lord. He gave the piece of paper to the woman, and he said, this is an incomplete sentence. And one of these words is, 
is going to have to be marked out, and I ask that you pray about it. He turned to pray for the woman, and then only seconds later, he could hear the woman crying. And in her prayer, she was praying, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Well, for some of us, that may seem a very heavy-handed way of, of inviting her to pray. But the truth, the truth of the story is still there. So often we see Jesus as friend or Jesus as comforter or Jesus as confidant or Jesus as, well, a good example But the story we read this morning, it ends, it ends, it takes the whole of the chapter, and there are only four healing miracles in the entire Gospel of John. This is the only healing miracle of sight, and it ends with the man turning to Jesus and calling him Lord, and he worships him. He's the first person in the entire Gospel of John, to worship Jesus. He didn't worship him when he called him the man Jesus. He didn't worship him even when he saw Jesus as a a prophet, when questioned about it. It was when he turned to Jesus as, as Lord that he saw who he was. And in your life and mine, so often there there are parts of our lives that we want to hold on to and we say, my time is my time. And yes, Jesus can be my confidant. Yes, he can be my friend. Yes, but he doesn't really call us to do anything other than what we want to do already because my time is my time. That we don't mind calling Jesus friend or confidant because, well, my money is my money. And I I get to spend my money how I want to spend my money. And then we can call him anything but Lord because when we call him Lord, well, all. He's Lord of all of our lives, not just the portions we, we, we want to hand over. When Jesus is Lord, He's Lord not only of our, our time and not only of our money, He's Lord of all of our lives. And so often we say, my habits, well, it's, it's, it's my, or my business. My private life is my private life. And Jesus can be Lord of, yeah, well, you know, my spiritual life, but I'm Lord of, no. It's either Jesus is Lord or Jesus is not. This morning, this morning, the risen Christ speaks to us and is calling us, calling us to open our eyes And to see, Jesus is not Lord of a portion of our lives. He's either Lord or he's not. He's either treasure, the treasure, or he's not. And there may be parts of your life that you've been trying to hang on to. It may be your time. That you've said, my time is my time. Or it may be, well, it may be your money. And you know what he's calling you to, but still you said, yeah, but my money is my money. Or there may be habits that you know are hurtful, hurtful to you or hurtful to others. But you've said, well, my business is my business. My habits are my habits. Or my friends are my friends. And you know that there's some of those friends that are leading you away from Jesus as Lord. This morning, I want to pray with you. Join with me in prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, you are the treasure. The treasure that opens our eyes. And we begin to see that, yes, you are Lord, not just a friend, not just a comforter, not just one to, to, to go ahead and okay whatever is we want and we get our... the portions of life we want and you get the portions of life that well we 
really don't want or we want to give over to you. This day, Lord, by the power of your Spirit, give us strength enough, power that we don't have, that that you are the treasure of our lives and, and we don't have you, but you have us. Lord, in this day, open our eyes that we might see the treasure in others. And maybe that we've developed a keen eye for brokenness in others and, well, we see them maybe, maybe as an object lesson or maybe even as an annoyance. And we've been practicing hostility. Lord, open our eyes to see the treasure in others. Lord, it may be that this morning that we've lacked those eyes to see the treasure in in us. That you, through your Holy Spirit, you've breathed power that we might become your children. And we might be, might display your light, your likeness, your image. It's not what we've been doing, but through your power, it's possible. Give us those eyes to see what's possible through your power. And we ask for it now, starting this day. And you begin to grow and grow your light in us in the days to come. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.